going on everyone? Welcome to a brand new Netflix movie review. Today I'm going to be discussing Velvet Buzzsaw. Velvet Buzzsaw is written and directed by Dan Gilroy, the man who brought us Nightcrawler, a film that I am a huge fan of. In that year, it was my favorite film, and it is easily still my favorite Jake Gyllenhaal performance to date. Ever since then, I've wanted to see more of what Dan Gilroy is going to bring to this world of cinema. Roman J. Israelite was fine. It was decent. Denzel gave a great performance, and it looked great, but the film itself had a lot of story issues. Coming off of now, that film, I'm kind of going to Velvet Buzzsaw, expecting it kind of going back to those Nightcrawler realms. Is it going to go there, though? Like this. This film was definitely not what I expected it to be, and I don't think it hits the height of what Nightcrawler was. I think Nightcrawler is an almost near masterpiece, personally. I think it is a perfectly balanced film. And Velvet Buzzsaw, for me, at times, can be a little bit of a mixed bag of some sorts. Before I get more into this for you guys, let me know what your guys' thoughts are on this film. And if you guys are new here, consider hitting that like and subscribe button, where you guys get tons of early movie reviews, geeky content on this channel. Plus, you guys can also check out Sandwich on Films over there for movie news, movie reviews, and even giveaways and advanced screenings. Buzzsaw is about a bunch of artists. And after a series of paintings by an unknown artist are discovered, a supernatural force enacts its revenge on those who have allowed greed to take force. From the trailer to the synopsis to hearing Dan Gilroy to hearing the cast in here, you have Jake Gyllenhaal, Rene Russo, David Diggs from Blind Spotting, and the cast really goes on from there. Again, was pretty excited about it. And even though I don't, I still think the film is a little bit of a mixed bag with certain instances, I think a lot of that mixed bag comes from what my expectations were on this film. And I kind of have to deviate them to talk about this film because the trailer really marketed to me a different type of movie. And I have to say, if you have not watched the trailer for this, do not watch watch it because it actually does spoil quite a few of the great moments that were hidden within this film that I wish now I had not seen the trailer for because it kind of gets predictable. You're like, oh, I saw that in the trailer. I know exactly where that's going to go. Oh, I know where that death's going to go. I found myself getting a little bit disappointed by the way how they marketed this film. This film was marketed more as a horror slasher film with paintings trying to kill people, which in the trailer, again, great concept. I love what it was going for. The movie doesn't really get to that till about the 30-40 minute act. I did not expect that. I expected this film to touch more on that horror slasher flick. But in general, Velvet Buzzsaw is actually a satirical look at the art and LA lifestyle. You know, we've seen these kind of satirical moments in films before, but Dan Gilroy obviously takes it in a different limelight. We saw the same thing in Nightcrawler. We see the same thing in Roman J. Israelite. We see what he's doing. He's tackling different social aspects of life and tackling them within a more satirical, darker kind of void and look to it. And Velvet Buzzsaw is tackling the art style in LA and these kind of critiques and everything of what people do and it hits really all the niches of that lifestyle. I think I liked what Dan Gilroy was doing. I actually really appreciated the beginning. I was really into this quirky, different type of tone and unique tone, in fact, to the whole film. It kind of in the same style. This really does feel like a Dan Gilroy film, and it feels like it's living in the same world as Nightcrawler. In fact, I was waiting for Lou Bloom to just walk through the door and start filming stuff. In fact, that actually would have been cool if there was a little bit of a tie in there. Carriages in here are very interesting, and might I say, Jig Gyllenhaal is excellent in this film. I mean, when isn't he? But he really transforms again. He is a chameleon. You don't see Jake Gyllenhaal. You see his character. And really, everyone else in here gives an outstanding performance. Tony Collette's great. Rene Russo's great. David Diggs is great. I wish we would have gotten a little bit more of him. And the whole cast alongside is great. They all serve a purpose for this film. But... When we finally get into that horror aspect of what is happening with these paintings, of getting a little bit predictable to that end, and it kind of just turned into a very generic slasher film that is not really going back to those quirky tones. The quirky tones are still there and prevalent throughout the rest of the film, but at the same time, I found myself just going... It's getting predictable. It's still fun. I'm liking it. I'm liking how people are dying in very creative ways, but... I knew this was coming from the trailer. And this is more from my disappointment from what the trailer had marketed and how it had marketed to it. It's not the film, personally. I, I actually really enjoyed the film, even though it is a mixed bag at times. And I expected also something completely different when I hear Dan Gilroy's tackling the horror genre. I didn't expect a straight-up slasher horror film. 
but that, in times this is what the film turns into towards the end. Kills in here are unique. I enjoyed that for the most part. The performances in here are great and it very much is a unique look into the LA satirical life. I like when Netflix takes on these films. They're different and I wish I would have been able to see it in theaters. Before I get to my final thoughts, guys, let me know again. What are your guys' thoughts on Velvet Boss? Are you guys looking forward to this film? Are you excited for it? Let's talk about it down below. This new horror film on Netflix. It's different. It's unique. I appreciate what it is. Did it disappoint me in a little bit because I expected something different? Yeah, but I also expected for this film to be different, just not in this kind of different way. And take a shot for every single time I've said either Velvet Buzzsaw, different, or unique. It has great cinematography. It has very interesting types of kills and actual cool visual effects within here. The performances are all great from everyone, but in the end of the day, the film does feel like a mixed bag. It doesn't feel like it gets to the same level as Nightcrawler was on. And even though it carries great performances, I do feel like the story is a little bit of a mix. We aren't trying to get to certain things. For this film, for what it is, I really liked it. And again, I'm still looking forward to whatever Dan Gilroy does next. I don't think this just shows him off as being a one-note guy. I think this is two for one with me, personally. All it said, I'm going to give Velvet Buzzsaw a B. What are you guys thoughts are on Velvet Buzzsaw? Did you guys like it? Did you hate it? Did you love it? Let's talk about it down below. Hit that like and subscribe button if you guys are new here. Check out Sandwich on Films, and I'll see you guys soon. Stay classy.